Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Senator Charles Schumer says we need more ramp checks. Cessna Pilot Center app enhances training. FAR 101 now affects UAV hobbyists. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's July 1st, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Here's a report that will have general aviation pilots shaking their heads in disbelief. During a media event in Farmingdale, New York on Monday, Senator Charles Schumer called on the FAA to step up ramp checks of small airplanes, which he says might prevent accidents. According to the Senator, the number of ramp checks on general aviation aircraft in New York has fallen over the past 10 years, and he says the number of inspections has declined, stating that Long Island has been plagued with a series of small plane crashes. The Long Island Business News reports that while Schumer admitted that there may be no connection between the decrease in ramp checks and the increase of accidents, he said the FAA should conduct more ramp checks, mainly at general aviation airports, to get a better handle on unsafe actions by pilots. Schumer said, by conducting additional ramp inspections, the FAA can do its part in helping to ensure the safety of our skies and neighborhoods. Cessna Pilot Centers are using some of the latest technology to give pilots convenient access to their online courses on the iPad even when they are offline. The Cessna Pilot Center Companion app, which is a free download from the Apple Store, allows pilots to download lessons from their courses to their iPad. After progressing through the course on the iPad, the pilot's course progress is automatically synchronized with the servers. Then when you resume the course, either offline or online, all of the progress they've made offline will be displayed on their menu. Cessna Pilot Business Center leader Christopher Crow said, The great thing about our iPad companion app is that customers are not locked into choosing between using their iPad or a computer. The ability to work offline on an iPad and then sync their progress with the servers gives learning pilots the option to continue their course from anywhere, connected or not. We guess the excuse for not completing a lesson would now be, the dog ate my iPad? After the break, UAV flyers need to check out the new rules. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aerial TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aerial-news.net. An attorney who has analyzed the new FAA rules regarding unmanned aircraft says the new UAS rules have an adverse effect on the model airplane industry and model airplane flyers. Writing on the Drone Law Journal online, Loretta Alcalá says that the FAA has added recreational UAV flying to Part 101 of the FARs, which already governs tethered balloons, unmanned rockets, kites, and similar aircraft. According to this report, up until now, model aircraft have fallen under the guidance of Public Law 11295, Section 336, which is the FAA Reauthorization and Modernization Act of 2012. Now, this law has been rewritten into an FAA format and inserted into FAR 101. In other words, Alcalay says a hobby flyer who does not meet the requirements for Part 101 would be assumed to be operating under Part 107, and failure to meet the requirements of Part 107 could result in penalties being imposed by the FAA. It would be wise for hobbyists to be familiar with the new FAR 101 and the non-hobbyist FAR 107. It's important to understand the difference between these two regulations. It's Friday, and it means that it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. 
When politicians start talking about aviation, it gets scary because someone may actually think they know what they're talking about. Jim is here to say that Schumer is wrong. Ramp checks will not enhance aviation safety. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Chris, and hi, folks. I need to talk about an old enemy of aviation, one that I personally experienced over a dozen times while I was researching the Bob Hoover book back in the late 90s. We're talking about ramp checks. And the reason it comes up is because one of aviation's major thorns in our sides is a Democratic senator from New York by the name of Charles Schumer. Well, Chuck Schumer has no problem showing that he's ignorant of aviation. He's come out against aviation interests a number of times. He doesn't like helicopter noise. He doesn't like this. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like the FAA. And well, at least it's something we can agree on. But the plain fact of the matter is this. Chuck Schumer really doesn't know much about aviation except to attack it. And this time he's decided because there have been a number of accidents within his jurisdiction and a lessened emphasis on ramp checks down from 2,800 to something like 750 or so in the past 10 years. Well, that's got to be what it is. And while he admits there may not be a correlation between ramp checks and safety, he wants you to go ahead and have more ramp checks anyway. Folks, ramp checks are a power grab. I'm not quite sure of the real constitutionality of these things, but then again, the Administrative Procedures Acts that the FAA uses to enforce itself upon pilots, never been that constitutional anyway. It's one of the reasons why we advocated for a Pilot's Bill of Rights over 30 years ago. It's why we're so happy to see Senator Inhofe working so diligently on PBOR 1 and now PBOR 2, although it's probably going to take five or six till we get to the strength we need to enforce real change. But ramp checks are a paperwork exercise. Is your medical in date? Do you have all the required placards and, and such on your airplane? They're a nuisance. I don't see them enhancing aviation safety. I can't say that I've ever heard of one really enhancing aviation safety. And I remember during the dozen or so ramp checks that I, under, that I underwent during the Bob Hoover affair, that in many cases, the, if the inspectors involved flat out said, hey, you're the Hoover guy, huh? Well, let's go take a look at your paperwork. And well, my paperwork was fine. And we would call the US attorney and explain to them that discriminating against a writer who is trying to do something that you didn't like was kind of unconstitutional and please go to hell by your earliest possible means, so forth and so on. But it was ridiculous. It's still ridiculous. Ramp checks prove nothing. You want to have a proper ramp check, let's find a way for an off-the-record opportunity for pilots and FAA people to get together, find out what's right or wrong about any scenario, and give them 30 to 60 days to get it corrected. That would be a proper ramp check. But no, ramp checks are an opportunity for the FAA to show you how powerful they are, uh, that they're the boss in your universe, and you better go along to get along. No, don't believe it, don't want it, and Schumer, Schumer is aeronautically ignorant and he doesn't like aviation and ramp checks are just one more way he has of proving it to you. Folks, we can do better than this. Aviation safety will be enhanced as a community effort by our mutual education, by our mutual cooperation, and by finally building a relationship somewhere down the line with the FAA that's not based on punitive BS, but on all of us working together to create an aviation world that works safely, responsibly, and ethically for everybody. Schumer wouldn't know anything about that after all. He's a U.S. Senator. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell and waiting for my next ramp check. After these messages, the Flying Tigers are headed for Atlanta GA. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. 
Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. The aviation industry is full of news, and we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. At least nine World War II P-40 Warhawk fighters will descend upon DeKalb Peachtree Airport September 24th and 25th to celebrate the Atlanta Warbird Weekend. The program will commemorate the 75th anniversary of the American Volunteer Group, also known as the Flying Tigers. Here's an aerospace management change to note. Steve Isakowicz, president of Virgin Galactic, has been elected president of the Aerospace Corporation effective August 1st. He will assume the position of aerospace president and CEO on October 1st. Fokker Technologies recently delivered the 750th electric flight bag solution to A320 charter operator SmartLinks Airlines. Fokker says their electronic flight bag solution has been installed on more than 15 different aircraft types in more than 20 different countries. DARPA has launched its Advanced Full Range Engine Program. This program seeks to develop and demonstrate a new aircraft propulsion system that can operate over the full range of speeds required from low speed takeoff through hypersonic flight. Raytheon announced a test milestone in its development of the U.S. Air Force's GPS Next Generation Operational Control System. The new system offers significant improvements to the GPS on which the U.S. military and civilians rely, including enhanced availability, accuracy, and security. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Once again, we are seeing some truly innovative products being introduced through non-type certificate home-built experimental aircraft. Astronics Corporation is introducing the new X1 Plus HR Enhanced Vision Recovery System for experimental and home-built aircraft. This uncertified X1 Plus HR sensor uses a long-wave infrared thermal imager with electronic zoom. The system, which only weighs about 1.2 pounds, allows pilots to see temporary obstructions such as wildlife construction barriers which may not be visible and are not in any synthetic vision database. The X1 Plus HR enables pilots to see up to 10 times further than unaided human vision in visibility obscured conditions such as smoke haze and light fog in daytime or nighttime in its sensor image that can be displayed on a wide variety of existing flat screen displays. The new system has a metal fairing design with integral window heaters which allow it to operate in temperature environments from negative 55 degrees Celsius to positive 70 degrees Celsius. You can check it out on the Astronics booth at EAA Air Venture 2016. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Airborne Unlimited stream daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. From the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource, I believe I can fly.